So a little while back, I was down in Florida. Florida's a beautiful place. I like going down there. I sort of put my feet up and go enjoy the sand and the sun and all that good stuff. Now, come on back to right now. Today feels like Florida. Not in the sense that it looks like Florida because we got tons of hills around here and certainly different tree and wildlife species and bugs, as you can see, floating around my head, but because of the humidity. It is so humid today. It feels like I'm taking a bath outside without actually being in a bathtub or even in a shower. Last time I was in Florida, I think it was July, it felt exactly like that. I was sort of standing outside and I could feel like that moisture everywhere. I also noticed a few other interesting things down in Florida, uh, aside from uh, alligators. Uh, I also noticed that there was a ton of lightning. One time I was down there and I was close to the coast and I saw lightning going off uh, in the distance off the coast and I thought it was actually fireworks. I'm not really used to seeing lightning like they have down there and I think it all comes back to their uh, high humidity. But anyways, that's for another story. Uh, it feels like Florida today. What I'm doing today here in central Ontario, Canada, besides fighting bugs, is I'm going to make some log bunks out of those timbers I made last day. You can see them over here. These are six by six red pine. Uh, these are green as green can be. I cut these trees down yesterday. I milled them yesterday, so they are very, very wet. But we're going to make our log bunks out of them nonetheless. And uh, the log bunks, or uh, should I say log deck, is going to go right about here. What the log deck is going to do for me, it's going to allow me to stockpile logs on. And then I can sort of put the tractor away. And then when I'm out sawing, I'm doing nothing but that. I'm just sawing. And all I'm doing when I need a new log is simply rolling the log from the log deck, which will be here, onto the sawmill. And I continue cutting. I am not a big fan of constantly having to stop sawing, get in the tractor, load a new log on the sawmill, being very careful not to damage anything. Not a big fan of that. Although some days like today when I get in the tractor for that little break with the air conditioning, it is kind of nice. But I like the log deck, especially for times of the year like the winter where it's a little bit harder to get around. If you guys can imagine, if I leave logs like that piled on the ground, and I'm simply relying on my tractor to pick them up and load them on the sawmill when I'm ready. If there's like two or three feet of snow on the ground and I leave logs like that, well, they freeze to the ground. And then I got a whole big problem, not to mention I probably lose sight of them with the snow. I'm going to build a log deck. We'll alleviate that problem. Guys, glad you're all here. Make sure you check out how I'm going to dig these holes because I got a little, little toy, I'll call it, in the form of a chainsaw. If you haven't seen a chainsaw dig a hole before, and I'm not joking, Make sure you make sure you stay tuned. It's kind of fun. Guys, here we go. All right, guys, if you haven't seen this before, here's what we're dealing with. So I've got an auger here in my right hand, and uh, basically this is an eight inch diameter auger. This is gonna go onto this right here, uh, what this is, this is the Lewis Company. Uh, they make a Lewis winch, which is what you've seen on the channel if you've been around my channel before. But they also make this thing. This is the Lewis uh, Winch Company multi-drill. This is the direct drive version. And so what you're going to notice here is my chainsaw, which I'll talk about in a minute. It's hooked up directly to this bit. And you can see the shaft that comes off the bottom. This goes basically right in here with this pin like so and what this allows for is it allows for the power from the chainsaw to make its way down to the uh, to the auger and this is what I'm actually going to drill holes with for my posts all right so you can see the setup right there I have one other video of this whole thing cutting holes uh, you can check out as well the actual power head I'm using, this is a Hall's Forma G660. This is a 92cc chainsaw. I don't use it a lot, to be honest, for cutting wood. In fact, I've never cut wood with it. I've only ever used it for my Lewis winch or this right here. So we're going to fire this up and then we're going to uh, make some holes. You Watch as I go here. Uh, I'm going to be holding it like this. And so I'm going to uh, start the hole. And then obviously once it gets to the depth I need, then I'm going to pull it out. Um, Many people will ask me, but what happens when you hit a, what happens when you hit like a root or something or a rock? Aren't you going to go flying? Well, it would seem that way, but the clutch on the chainsaw will slip in the event that this uh, auger gets bound up. Just like if you're cutting wood and for whatever reason the chain has to stop, 
gets bound up in a piece of wood or something, the clutch uh, slips. And uh, so that's the same principle here. So we'll fire this up. We'll uh, put some holes in. Easy as that. Now don't get me wrong, this is a heavy setup right here, but it's kind of good because the weight uh, helps push the auger into the ground. I wasn't pushing at all. In fact, uh, what I was trying to do was just be easy on the throttle. If you go hard with the throttle, it's going to drive right down and uh, you got to make sure that uh, you can get it back out. Anyone who's ever operated a uh, three-point hitch auger, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The worst thing you can do is drive it into something solid. You hit something and then you can't get it out again. So. That's pretty good. Uh, if I go up to this point here, ends up being about three feet. Uh, in a perfect world around here, you'd want to get down to four feet or more. Uh, that's our frost line. But uh, yeah, three feet is where I'm getting. I'll just have to dig out the rest of the holes. So I'm gonna put three posts in, one, two, and three for this particular side of my log deck. And then I'll do the same on the other side. <clears throat> now I've roughly marked out where I want the holes, knowing that I'm probably gonna have to change it just based on the number of trees and roots probably going to hit one so we'll just uh, keep at her there's a the root you guys can see it's probably out this tree let's try over here set a little low on my chainsaw probably want to bump that up a bit anyways there's three holes we'll uh, continue
is we got all six of the holes drilled. Uh, that's a very powerful chainsaw. 92 cc's is no joke. That thing's worked very, very well. I think one day I'll put a bar and chain on it and actually cut some wood with it. But in this case, it worked good on that auger. Uh, you just got to be careful, as I mentioned. If you know for certain there's roots or rocks, just take it easy. Notice how I wasn't going full bore there. If I was going full throttle and you catch on one of those, although the clutch will likely slip, you're probably going to get a little bit of a jar to the wrist uh, regardless. And so I don't want that, so I was taking her easy. Now this soil is pretty much pure sand, and so it uh, cut through it very, very easily. I've got some clay around here as well. Could probably give that a try. Uh, obviously the sand is well draining. It's good for red pines, and it's also good for drilling. So all in all, worked well. Just got to bump up that idle on the chainsaw. You guys saw me there having to hit that throttle as soon as it fired. It would have died otherwise. Anyways, let's get the post ready to go. As I said, we've got timbers. Some of these timbers I'm cutting in half, like this one and one more over there. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to put some sort of a preservative measure in place so that when I put them in the ground, they don't simply rot off in a year. Some of you guys to preserve posts, you like to use like uh, oils and stuff like that. I don't wanna use oil. I don't wanna contaminate my soil. And so I'm actually gonna use the propane right here hooked to my tiger torch or that big torch on the bottom there. And we're gonna char up the end of the, of the post. Now this is going to prevent it from uh, decaying, at least decaying quickly, as would be the case if I simply threw it in the ground. So here we go. All right, guys, I got the timbers there. I'm just about ready to fire up the propane torch. I'm going to char those pieces of timber. Uh, I'm going to char to a depth of about two to three millimeters. What that's going to do, it's going to essentially burn the outer soft layers of that, uh, of that red pine there. And it's going to create a barrier. It's going to create a barrier to uh, decay. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. This whole process of uh, burning in order to preserve has been around for a very long time. I'll talk about it in a little bit here, but it's going to prevent it from, prevent the wood that is, from decaying or breaking down in the, uh, in the soil. Now, let's talk a little bit more about decay. Decay essentially is the combination of a few things in the perfect conditions. Oxygen, which obviously I'm breathing right now. Uh, moisture, which is falling on me. It's also present in the ground. It's also present in the air. And then temperature, and the temperature is going to be a big factor in how fast this wood decays. Right now it's very warm out, as you guys can probably tell by me sweating. So if we have a high temperature, we have oxygen, we have some moisture present, well that's going to be perfect conditions for fungi, or fungi, or fungi, depending on who you talk to, to really flourish. They're the ones who are going to break down all the different cells in that wood, break down the fibers in the wood and cause it to uh, essentially make its way from the beautiful piece of lumber it is, back into the soil in order to repeat that whole process of growth so we want to try to preserve the wood so it doesn't decay because i don't want to rebuild this every single year and the fact of the matter is fungi is all around me and so i can't get rid of it of course i could probably combat it with chemicals but i'm not going to do that i'm going to do a bit of a, uh, a natural process and this is going to prevent those harsh chemicals which don't go away from seeping down into my soil and staying here we're going to char this. So let's fire her up. All right, change of plans for a minute. It's gonna take me way too long and it's gonna use up all my propane and then some. Uh, so instead of burning it that way with that, uh, that Tiger Torch, I'm gonna to cut these in half. That'll be the length that they should be. I'm gonna get my burn barrel out here. We'll throw the pieces in there, surround it with dry wood. We'll get a fire going. We'll let them burn for a while and then I'll pull them out. At least that's the plan. I think it'll be a little more time effective. I'm just making a mark here where I'm gonna cut them. And so we're going to have six pieces in total here for six holes. Well, 
well this is the alternative setup you guys can see we got a burn barrel and we just put the post in there we got a decent fire going and i've got a fire extinguisher on hand i've got water on hand and uh, obviously just staying out here and watching it to make sure things are safe so just letting the fire burn for a little while and i think this is a lot more effective probably cost effective certainly i was going through that propane like it was going out of style and i think it's about 22 dollars a fill up and so i would have definitely used more than one tank of of propane this is absolutely free you guys can see all the off cuts over there that's what i'm using for firewood just to get this going i think if i take anything away from this let your post dry a little bit this is literally a tree i cut down the day before yesterday or maybe it was yesterday and so this was practically still uh, wet and it's having a hard time charring obviously it has to dry before it burns so uh, let it let it dry a little bit before you burn it you'll save yourself some hassle but I guess all I'm missing now is the hot dogs and marshmallows. good right there.
All right, good news. We are level, level and plumb. That's what I always go for, no matter whether I'm using lumber at the store or lumber that I make here for my trees. We have two sides here built. That is all I'm going to put in terms of supports. Maybe down the road, I'll put something extra just to hold it there, but I think it's solid. We've got that buried down. I think it's down about two and a half feet. As I mentioned, in a perfect world, it'd be down four feet. That's below the frost line. The trouble is my auger does not go down four feet and I didn't feel like hand digging down to four feet. So this is what I did. Now the soil is very uh, sandy, so it's well drained. My hope is that frost will not accumulate around the, uh, the uh, post to the point where it'll push it. If it does, well, you live and you learn and guess what I'll be doing? I'll be digging down to four feet. Anyways, I think this is good to go. Uh, as I said, this was a uh, first for me, getting the wood, charring it. Uh, I'm not gonna try to pronounce the uh, process, but you guys saw me char the wood there. Uh, what I started with was a propane tiger tor torch, as I call it. Uh, that was good. We were using an awful lot of propane. I wasn't getting very far. And so I thought, oh, what the heck, we'll get the burn barrel out. Fired that thing up. I probably sat around and burned wood for probably two hours, but it was a nice afternoon, aside from the fact that it's a scorching hot day out. But we uh, cooked the wood up, charred it. Some pieces, I don't know if they got charred enough, but we charred it to the point where we didn't want to wait for it to char anymore. And so we're hoping that was about two to three millimeters. And what that'll do using the process that I'm not going to name, but I'll write down there. Uh, using that process, it gets rid of that outer layer. Uh, that outer layer is what the fungi and insects and uh, all those critters like to typically eat and, and decay. And so hopefully we got rid of that with the char and now the inner layer of that of that wood uh, the pores are going to close up if the pores close up just a little bit then it's not going to move water around as freely it's not going to uh, absorb that water and as you guys know water is one of those key ingredients in decay so if we can reduce that uh, influx of water uh, through the wood then we're gonna we're gonna make it last quite a bit longer uh, if for whatever reason i have to rebuild this down the road what i'm gonna do is not use pine pine is what i have available to me just look around what I'm actually going to use is cedar. Uh, I would probably have to travel a little bit to my local farm store. They tend to sell uh, round cedar posts uh, used for fencing and farming and that. Cedar works really, really well. Just bury that in the ground and uh, that way that stuff won't uh, rot quite as quick as an untreated pine post. Anyways, dad came out, helped me out. That was a big help for sure. Uh, always helpful having two people, whether it's holding a tape measure or uh, calling out measurements or carrying beams. Big help all around. We have a little look see at the finished product here. You guys can see we got a fair bit of space in between both sides of the log deck. In total, there's about seven feet, give or take, maybe a touch more. And my tractor is about six feet wide, so it's going to allow me to drive in uh, without problems, pick up any lumber off the uh, lumber shed if I need to. And it's also going to allow me to come in and uh, scoop out any debris that uh, falls in this location. And that includes snow as well. Snow is gonna fall here. It's gonna get definitely higher than this. With it open, I can come in and scoop it right out. Now, I made it as wide as I could without making it too wide. The odd time I cut eight foot wide material, uh, eight foot wide logs. And so I didn't wanna have it too, too wide or the logs wouldn't sit up here. So there's a bit of a, bit of a balance there. Wide enough to get the tractor through, but not too wide for the eight foot logs to fall through. Lucky for me, I tend to cut eight foot logs at eight foot six. And so that'll give me a little bit more space. So overall job well done. Now I haven't secured the beam to the post yet because I'm playing around with how far I want it to be from the sawmill. What you'll end up seeing in future episodes is some sort of a intermediate piece that I more or less just, uh, I don't know, pull out and lean up here and set on something back here. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like yet. That way the logs will then roll off here onto that intermediate piece and right up onto the log bunks. Obviously, gotta move the log stop. So that's for another day. I'm pooched. It was a beautiful afternoon out here despite the heat. Glad you guys joined me. And uh, yeah, kind of a nice afternoon for a campfire, I suppose. Guys, make sure you subscribe. Give her the old like-a-roo. See you next time.